Ghana has an exciting, rich, and diverse food culture. Flavors and ingredients from the north to the south come together to create delicious dishes. Almost every ethnic group that makes up this vibrant nation exhibits a plethora of dishes, snacks, sweets, and beverages. Despite the vast array of local snacks, Ghana imports billions of dollars worth of snack foods from China, the UK, and the US yearly. This was not so in the past. We're on a quest to find the sweet, the spicy, and the almost forgotten local snacks right here in Ghana. Our journey starts from Agbozome in the Volta region. A three-hour drive from Accra, Agbozome is the home of starch kono, popularly known as Aibe Biscuit. We meet Madame Gladys, an Agbozume resident who takes us to one of the many starch kono factories scattered around the community. Starch kono is a beautifully scented, clay oven baked biscuit made from cassava and coconuts, which grow in abundance here. It has a creamy taste coupled with a nutty flavor. The biscuit dough is made from cassava starch, coconut juice, sugar, salt, and water. The dough is then left overnight to rest. The next day, the dough is neatly arranged in baking sheets and marked with a special stamp that differentiates one maker from the next. Starch kono has been made in this area for over a hundred years, according to Madame Gladys. It is a skill that has been passed on from the grandmothers. The clay ovens that bake starch kono are powered by dried coconut fronds, which are stuffed into the ovens and burnt to create the high temperatures needed inside. Once the fronds turn to ashes, they are hauled out and baking sheets of biscuits quickly replace them. When a batch of the biscuit is fully baked, it is replaced with another batch until the heat in the oven significantly reduces. These biscuits are then washed to remove any ashes from the oven and left to dry. They are then packaged and transported into the greater Accra region over the border to Togo and beyond. Our search takes us to Moshizongo, a neighborhood in Kumase in the Ashanti region. We're on the hunt for dakwa, known in other parts of Ghana as Jolu. Dakwa is a spicy, slightly sweet groundnut and corn based snack. Here in Moshizongo, we meet Nata, who has been in the dakwa business for approximately 20 years. She takes us through the long and tedious process of making this simple, tasty and nutritious snack. The process begins by roasting corn and groundnuts on a charcoal fire. This is a lengthy procedure that can take hours depending on the amount being made. Once adequately roasted, the groundnut is allowed to cool and then dehusked by hand. In a basin, the roasted corn kernels are combined with cloves and dried pepper, as well as ginger. In a separate bucket, the roasted groundnuts sit together with bags of sugar and salt. At the neighborhood mill, the corn and spices are milled first, and then the groundnuts, sugar and salt are added to the corn and milled again. The smell of the groundnuts, spices, ginger, and sugar coming together is mouth-watering. The powdery mixture is then allowed to cool. Once cool, it is then molded into the spherical shape that dakwa is characterized by. A few minutes walk from the bustling Roman Hill Market in Kumasi is Roman Hill Zongo, where a plethora of local snacks can be found. We meet Aisha Abbas, a Pencaso maker who has been in the business for over 10 years. Pencaso is a traditional Hausa donut, freshly fried every day in communities just like this. 
It is served piping hot with a sprinkle of sugar. Unlike the Western style donut, Pinkasso is infused with onions and fresh pepper, giving it a subtle but delicious flavor. Crispy and golden on the outside, but soft and chewy on the inside, Pinkasso is a popular accompaniment to Hausa Kuku, a millet porridge. A simpler composition than one would think, Pinkasso is made up of five ingredients, flour, salt, yeast, water, and a blend of onions and peppers. The ingredients are combined until the desired thickness is achieved. It is then allowed to rest. After a few hours of rising, the batter is ready to be golden fried. A special technique is used when placing the batter into hot oil, and this is what creates the ring-like shape of Pinkasso. Through narrow pathways leading from the hustle and bustle of the market, we meet Mrs. Humu Musa, a wagashi maker who has been in business for 15 years. Wagashi is a local cheese made from cow's milk and the Sodom apple plant. Gallons of milk are brought to a boil in huge cauldrons over charcoal fires. Juice from the pounded leaves and fruit of the Sodom apple plant is then added to the milk to start the coagulation process. The excess water is then poured off and the remaining milk solids are molded in plastic strainer. Once firm, the wagashi is sometimes dyed red with sorghum leaves. Unlike many cheeses, wagashi stays firm and fluffy even after being fried and is a great substitute for meat and fish in dishes. In the market, a wheel of cheese retails between 6 to 10 cities. It is, it is their wish that if there's a way of packaging in a different form, there are more people can have access to it and enjoy it. It is their wish, but how to get there is what we can do. We don't know how to get there. I'm 
Many Ghanaians now take their personal health into consideration when making decisions about food. Little knowledge about the nutritional and health values of these snacks might be a factor that plays a role in the low patronage of local snacks. Non-availability, perceived non-hygienic practices by makers, as well as the heavy influence of imported snacks have also contributed to the low patronage of local snacks. Poor branding and packaging has discouraged many Ghanaians from purchasing these local snacks.